Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the regular city council meeting of July 24th. We're glad to see you, and I know a lot of you people are here so that you can come up and tell us how much you love Caustic Center, and I really want to hear all of your comments because I, too, love Caustic Center. And so I, I really, I, I don't want to cut you off, but I'm only going to give you, like, five minutes and don't repeat, but that'll come up later. Anyway, welcome to the city council meeting for Farmington Hills regularly scheduled meeting. We always start with um, the uh, pledge. pledge of, <laughs> you think I know that after all these years, with the Pledge of Allegiance. So please rise and join us in the pledge. Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Thank you for the amen. That was nice. Um, next item is uh, roll call. Mayor Barnett. Here. Council members Bulaware. Here. Bridges. Here. Bruce. Here. Noel. Here. Massey. Here. And Newland. Here. Thank you. Next is the approval of the regular session agenda. Dr. Massey? Madam Mayor, I would move approval of the agenda as published. Okay, is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Dr. Massey, seconded by Council Member um, no, Newland. Thank you. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, passed unanimously, no one opposed. Mm -hmm. Next is the correspondence. Does anybody have any correspondence they would like to discuss? Okay, I did receive a whole lot of emails, um, well, three or four, from people regarding the Caustic Center in the last week or two, um, and they were speaking very highly about it and how they wanted it preserved, so um, so many of you showing up is not a surprise to us, so that's, that's very nice. So I did receive all of those emails, so anybody who sent us an email regarding the Caustic Center, we have received it. Um, next is the consent agenda. The consent agenda will be considered as one vote and is routine, administrative, and non-controversial and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member or a citizen so requests in which event the items will be removed from the consent agenda for consideration. Um, Dr. Bruce, by Mayor Pro Tem, will you please read the consent agenda? Thank you. Yes, item number six, recommended approval of purchase of user licenses for evidence.com digital evidence management with Axon in the amount of $55,000 annually, CMR 723.88. Number seven, recommended approval of award for contract for the Inkster Road sidewalk 11, 11 mile to High Stone Drive to Olson Cement Work in the amount of $67,562, CMR 723.89. Number eight, recommended approval of purchase of replacement patrol vehicles for the police department with Burger Chevrolet in the amount of approximately $222,098, CMR 723.90. Number nine, recommended approval of purchase of additional patrol vehicles for police department with Galena's Van Dyke Dodge in the amount of approximately $262,254, CMR 723.91. Number 10, recommended approval of award of agreement for police vehicle accessories to Winder Police Equipment in the amount of $110,692.92, CMR 723.92. Number 11, acknowledgement of fourth quarter financial summary and quarterly investment reports. Number 12, recommended approval of a request for employment under Section 10.01A of the City Charter for an aquatics attendant. Number 13, recommended approval of City Council study session meeting minutes of July 10th, 2023. And item 14, recommended approval of City Council regular session meeting minutes of July 10th, 2023. Okay, Mr. Bridges. Yes, council, uh, move council to approve the consent uh, agenda items uh, as read by the Mayor Pro Tem. Is there a support? Support. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's been moved by Mr. Bridges, seconded by Ms. Bolaware. Any discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Council members Newland? Yes. Bolaware? Yes. Massey? Yes. Noel? Yes. Bridges? Yes. Bruce? Yes. And Mayor Barnett? Yes. Thank you. Next is public questions and comments. You do not need a blue slip. Um, you will be limited to five minutes. When you get to four minutes and 30 seconds, I'll put my finger up like this, kind of wave it around. Um, if you are going to say something that somebody else has already said and you just want to go on record saying it, you can say ditto. That's perfectly appropriate. Um, we do not mind, um, and 
if anybody, if you want to form a line or how you want to do it, or if you have one common spokesperson, I don't know how you've decided to. Good evening. My name is Linda Bodson, and I'm a longtime resident of Farmington Hills. Um, I am part of the community of people who use the pool at the Caustic Center. Numbers coming to the pool, members um, coming to the pool are increasing. Last week, there were 70 people between 9 a.m. water exercise class and 10 a.m. class. On Friday, people were turned away from the pool because it was over capacity, which says a great deal about what this pool is doing for our community. As a group, we are doing everything we can to continue to age healthy and strong. Cossack Center has been a part of this plan for many years and for many of us. Um, projections show the numbers of seniors are increasing in our community, and I'm sure that is nothing new to all of you. You have seen the predictions. You know what's coming. Um, sports facilities a company advisory study proposed a Hawk Annex uh, to replace the Caustic Center. Certainly, this is a serious con consideration. We hope the annex would be operational prior to Caustic Center if it is closed. But when the Hawk was built, we were at meetings and we were told that the Caustic Center would continue as the senior center. The Hawk Pool is a great place for families, but not for many seniors. Recently, I read an article in the Hometown Life newspaper from May of 2023. The reporter quoted from a conversation with the staff members the following, the Caustic Center is an aging facility and it was never designed to be a recreational center, really? Personally, I don't know what else you would call a place which has a pool, which has a gym, exercise classes, yogas, pickleball courts, and so much more. The article also states, proposal for the Caustic Center future would go before the community before officials made any decisions. We're talking years of conversations here. Nothing has been decided. That's what the article concluded with. But we all see the buildings going up around the Caustic Center. Trucks are coming in, trucks are going out. Building, buildings going up on all different sides of us. Rose Builders has a sign on each driveway which indicates the opening of the senior living type village with apartments, assisted living, and memory care to open in the summer of 2024. That is only one year away. The Caustic Center is right in the middle of all of this. To me, there is a disconnect between what is being said and what is in motion on the grounds of the Caustic Center. Simply, we would like an update on the current situation and what is going on with the Caustic Center. Okay. Um... I can turn it over to the city manager, but I can tell you from our viewpoint, we did do a study and um, we are evaluating the study. Um, I, there is building going on there. There are new houses, that new apartments that are going in, but no decision as to what to do has been made yet regarding the caustic. Some of us have very strong feelings like you do, that it is a legacy building that does need repair but we should take care of what we have before we tear it down and build something new somewhere else. Well, I would that is my personal opinion, not that yeah. of the council. And unfortunately, I will not be on the council when they do make that final decision. Um, my term is ending in November. Um, but we love to hear your comments and we love to have you enter them into the record because that is part of the conversation that's gonna go on as to how to best serve our residents. This isn't about me, it's not about you, it's about all of us and we need to take your viewpoint into consideration. I would like to read the, oh, um, the facilities, the facility, the sports facilities um, uh, presentation, whatever the study was. Is there a link? Is it published on our website? Because I could not find anything. It's on our website. Maybe we'll put a hot button on it. Yeah, can you? Because I yeah. went through it pretty thoroughly and I could not find the information on Make it. Make sure we've got a link on our opening page of the website so that okay. you can find that. Because there were a lot of statements made when the Hawk was open and I, and I don't have anything, I'm not opposed to the Hawk. I go there with my grandkids, but I'm saying it's not the place for seniors. I mean, the pool is not the place that we really can actively swim and take care of ourselves. Okay. 
Thank you very much. You're welcome. Council Member um, no. Yeah, in, um, we've received many of, I don't know if they're, you know, your emails and, and your uh, fellow friends that all use the Castic Center, as mentioned earlier, we have received your emails. One of the items that was in the email, I should say the questions, um, was not just about the Castic Center, but there were questions about the Rose um, a, a Senior Facility that's being built behind it. And one of the questions is, um, will there be enough parking is Rose taking over some of the parking in the front of the Caustic Center? So that would be the south side of the Caustic Center. There were questions about that. Um, could maybe the city manager give an update for everyone on exactly how the Rose development impacts the Caustic Center in um, terms of parking? Excellent. And um, also, because I will say the Caustic Center is confusing because the city owns a portion of it, but the further north you get, that's not actually owned by the city. That's owned by the city uh, Sisters of Mercy. That's not city property. And the city of Mercy, or Sisters of Mercy, that's what was sold to Rose for the development, not the Caustic Center. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to clarify that as well. But the, I think the city manager can talk about the parking and so forth, because there's no plans for Rose to take any of that, that parking park. on the south side of the Caustic Center. But I'll let him further elaborate. That's great, Madam Mayor. Um, that is correct. The Rose development is a standalone development. Um, that means that their parking satisfies their parking needs is that development. <laughs> and what Council Person Noel said is absolutely true. The city of Farmington Hills never owned the city that's being developed now. That was owned by Sisters of Mercy. Um, we purchased the property to, to occupy the Caustic Center many, many years ago. I think it was in the 90s when we purchased that land. Um, there are reciprocal agreements between the two. Uh, in fact, we have one on the agenda this evening. Um, but what's happening with the Rose development is the Rose development. That the city has nothing to do with that other than uh, inspection and approvals of those inspections, just like any other development in the city. So um, as it relates to the future of um, the Caustic Center a, as a whole, um, I had an opportunity to meet with the chair of the Commission on Aging uh, two weeks ago, had a really good conversation with them, and, and you know, the the... the, the um, the reality is, is we have the SFC study. It's on the website. We'll, we'll make it um, a little more, a little easier for folks to find. Um, there is a major budgetary shortfall in our special services department, and a large part of that is facilities-based. Um, how the city moves forward together to address that budgetary shortfall um, still remains to be seen. One thing that is a certain is that we absolutely need the community's input on how we as a community move forward to address the needs of these com of the community, for especially the folks 50 and better, um, and how do we address those financial issues that are facing the city, which are very real. So um, I would um, certainly be in contact with my office to stay abreast of those, uh, those conversations. We will certainly make those uh, very, very public. We want public input. Um, and we haven't really had a chance to sit down with City Council to understand what the way forward is and how we will provide that public outreach. Um, there is a uh, Parks, um, Parks Department master plan that um, we are uh, duty bound to fulfill. We, maybe it'll be rolled up into the Parks master plan update um, in the coming year, 18 months or so. So please be patient, stay tuned. We're not closing the Caustic Center. It will be maintained. It will remain operational to the best of our ability. Um, and for the foreseeable future, it, we're not, it's not going anywhere, folks. So enjoy it, use it, and participate in those discussions when we, when we um, publicize them, please. We want your input. Thank you. OK, hello. Hi, my name is Shirley Carp. I've been a resident of Farmington Hills for many years. I have used the caustic pool also for many years. I have spinal stenosis, which affects my walking. And the only thing that helps is going to the pool, bicycling, suspending where the water, the weight of the water pulls your back down. Not, there is no other exercise that works for the back as well as the pool. Uh, I haven't prepared anything like the previous speaker. She did extremely well. I'm just speaking from my heart. I talked to the engineering department the other day. 
They are not putting a pool in any of those senior apartments. Now, it looks like there might be several hundred apartments or close to it. Those people are going to want to use the pool, not just the pool, the center, and that's income for the caustic center because they're going to have to pay dues just as we do, and that's going to be a lot more money. Plus, nobody thought of helping the uh, hawk anything for seniors. There's nothing there for seniors. They have two swim lanes, and those are strictly for swimmers. So there's no place for a senior to go there. And you have how many thousands of seniors in Farmington Hills that are going to be very unhappy if you close the Caustic Center. Very unhappy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Ellen Silverberg. I've been a resident of Farmington Hills about 29 years. Um, but I'm fairly, fairly new to the pool. A lot of the people here have been coming to the pool for years. In 2015, the OCC Orchard Ridge Pool was closed. In 2017, the West Bloomfield Aquatic Center Pool was closed. In 2020, the Jewish Community Center closed their indoor pool and their children's therapy pool. In 2022, Southfield Pool closed. Other community pools are closing. The Y is having trouble getting staffing. And I called them and asked them about their pricing today. Right now, a senior resident can go to the Caustic Center five days a week for $10 a week. Non-residents, it's $15 essentially for a week. Um, I was turned away, I was one of the people turned away last week. I got there at 9.30. They all know I always run late. I was there at 9.30 for the 10 o'clock class on Friday. And I believe eight people were turned away. Um, and I checked of the 30 people who were, in, uh, who were allowed to stay in the class, 10 were non-residents. This is, the caustic pool is aging. It needs a lot of work. It's being held together by paper clips and Band-Aids and, and chewing gum. And there needs to be an investment in the pool. It is, a, it is no longer just a Farmington Hills resource. It is now one of the few remaining pools. I mean, I, when I was in Florida for the winter and when I came back, I immediately was looking for water exercise class. And I was shocked to see that all the places I thought I could swim closed five to seven years ago. Um, there is a, it is a community need. It is a, a, it is a county need. And if you look at the Hawk, you can go to the Hawk. I was running the numbers to go to the Hawk and take those same classes. It's $40 a week for residents, $55 for non-residents. Some of the people who go to the Caustic Center cannot afford that. This is one of the few options like many of the people here, I have back issues. I've been using the pool uh, for, the, for my therapy. And it is, it, is a, it is a desperately needed county resource. And I hope that in addition that you, I realize that there is a budget shortfall, but there needs to be an investment to keep that pool going. And I think there may be a community-wide need for an additional pool. They, it's not fair to be turning people away who've been coming to class. People started showing up at 9.25 today for the 10 o'clock class. I mean, it's, it's, getting, it's getting to the point where, where people who've been coming for a long time, and most of the people that I see here, I see in the pool every morning, um, that are having to, you know, we're, we're now fighting for our spots. We're, and, they're, and we're asking, can you have, you know, can we have, make the, nine, the 10 o'clock class a residence class, make, the, make a, later, a class later in the day open to non-residents? There are staffing issues as well. Um, but this is, it, I, this is a desperately needed in, in not just Farmington and Farmington Hills, but it's a, it's a countywide issue now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very well said. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Donna Smith, and I'm a resident of Farmington Hills and have been for the last 20 years. Well, Mr. Bridges, I remember working with you. Uh, in any case, I am new to the senior, um, the senior world and have spent time both at the Hawk and at the Caustic Center. 
And as one of the previous speakers said, uh, it's more family oriented at the at the Hawk. You have a lot of little children there. In fact, I I, I know I stepped over several of them when I was out there <laughs> in, playing in the you know they were doing their pool swimming lessons or whatever. But I find that I'm more comfortable when I'm around people like minded people like myself. And there was one other thing that I I appreciate about the Caustic Center, and that's the fact that it's. The, um, I know many of the um, what, natatoriums or whatever they call the, the swimming areas, they have everything on in glass so that you could look right in and see everything. I kind of like that it doesn't have that at the at the caustic center. You know, we we uh, seniors come in all shapes and sizes, and we'd rather <laughs> keep that to ourselves. And but I enjoy the pool. I go. I I'm in the pool every single day. Um, and I too was one of the people who was turned away on Friday. And uh, I hear my cohort mentioning that on Wednesday there were about eight, where there were about twenty of us that got turned away on Friday. And I did later go to the uh, the open swim to try to get something in that day. But I do prefer the the the. The staff that's there, the the uh, I love children, but I don't have to be with them in the pool when I'm trying to stay fit. And I'm hopeful that the Caustic Center stays open, um, and whatever upgrades that we need to be done, that they are done. Um, it's just so much more relaxing for a senior to be at the Caustic Center than, you know, navigating through all the children that are at the Hawk. In fact, one of the instructors asked me last week, she says, well, I don't understand it. Why don't you just go over to the Hawk? I'm like, well, I don't feel like being bothered with the children. I do keep my grandchildren, you know, twice a week, and, I'm, and I don't have anything against children, but I, I'm so relaxed at the Caustic Center. I made some decisions about my own health. Um, I, one day, I, this is very brief, I was went to the, I used to work, and when we work, we try to schedule our doctor's appointments, dental appointments, appointments, or whatever we have to do before we go to work or the last thing in the evening. Now that I'm retired, I just, I made a conscious decision a few months ago that I'm gonna start making the appointments for afternoon. And I did that and I went to the doctor and I had just left the pool. I was in there for two hours as I am three days a week. And the doctor says, I don't know what you're doing, but your blood pressure is wonderful. I'm like, you know what doc, I just left the pool. It was so relaxing in there. There was no nothing but people my age or, or older who were in there. And we all were just having a good time talking and getting to know each other. Cause many of these people sitting here, I see them all the time in the pool cause I'm there daily. And because of that, I'm thinking, I have no stress. I have no children when I'm there. I don't have to worry about the children. I'm able to focus on me and my well-being. And most of the, the seniors that are there do so for that reason, for their own well-being. Not only do I use the pool, but I also use utilize the, uh, the uh, pickleball. In fact, I took lessons up there, and then there's a hustle class. I use, I go there for that. I don't know what the costs are, as my uh, friend alluded to, at the Hawk is more expensive. All I know is when I'm in there, there are people in my age range that's enjoying and, and enjoying the facilities. In fact, I stayed today to have lunch, and I really enjoyed that, so I'm going to start doing that more frequently. And I guess I'm a little concerned when I looked at the website for Rose that instead of them saying that there's a community center nearby, on the web, on their website, they say there's the community center, and they identify it as the Hawk. My preference as a senior now is that it stays open and that whatever upgrades that we need to keep it operational, that we, we do that. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Hello, I'm uh, Dan Wecker from the Emergency Preparedness Commission. So it's gonna be a little change of pace. I'm not here to talk about the Caustic Center, but uh, the tip of the month, uh, which is uh, related to emergency <laughs> services. Um, and uh, if that's okay with you guys. Sure. Um, one thing I want to encourage everybody on the council and in the public 
is besides from the tip of the month today, uh, we do sponsor the Emergency Preparedness Commission sponsors a CPR first aid class, and I encourage everybody to look into doing that once a month. We, we hold it once a month uh, as a way to uh, prepare yourself in case or you do encounter an emergency. If you ever attended one of my classes, you might know that I like quotes or movies and things of that nature. So as an introduction to the tip of the month, uh, which I, I did give a hard copy to the clerk, but I also will send an email version to enter into the minutes to cut down on my time. Uh, I have a quote from, uh, uh, that introduces my topic from a movie from 1967, at least I think most of you guys, since you're in the senior center, might, might know it. Cool Hand Luke, um, and this is the topic for um, uh, today. Here is failure to communicate. Some men use okay, so failure to communicate is the top where our topic or communications is the topic for today. Um, in a disaster or an emergency, you have to have a plan to make sure that you're safe, your loved ones are safe, and that you guys can communicate to each other. Uh, on a lot of emergencies, you are going to be separated from your phone, which is you have your numbers stored in it uh, and the like. So we have some tips related to that, which has to do with you should have a charger in your go bag, you know, your emergency go bag. You should memorize and practice typing in the numbers to well-known numbers of your family and uh, other places, because if your phone, you have to leave it without your phone, you're going to need to know that number to be able to communicate. So that muscle memory is very important. Um, sometimes uh, your cell service is not going to be available, so one tip is to perhaps, um, uh, as those things get congested, you can text each other, okay? It goes through a little easier. Another a aspect would be to have a uh, program into your devices, the in case of emergency number. Even us, um, I do also work for the fire department, but we, we can uh, access that, you know, use your face, okay, to access your device, and in case of an emergency, get uh, critical information from uh, your loved ones to be able to better take care of yourself. Some alternates to uh, having a cell phone also might be a CB radio or in your go kit, having a walkie-talkie or two, so you can, uh, if you got separated. Beyond that, and we've always stressed this in the fire service, but it's related to any emergency, which is to have a unification point, okay? Now, if there's a fire, maybe that's just down the street or at a neighbor's house, practice that. But uh, beyond that, if you're, it's not just a fire in your house or something local, maybe a tornado came through and took your whole block out, uh, you, perhaps you need to have a site further away from your, your, your home and a next door neighbor. So have that back up. Have everybody in your, your, your uh, close-knit group uh, know about that. Also, one last point, which is as you visit venues, let's say sporting venues or, or the zoo or whatever as a group, agree on as you enter that place where you're going to meet or maybe have a couple other alternative sites as to where you might meet up after uh, if you got separated in a case of an emergency. That's all I had for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good afternoon. Hello, Ms. Art. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. Nice to see you, Mayor. Nice to see you, too. I'm Michelle Art. My husband and I moved from Detroit about 14 years ago, and he found the Caustic Center almost immediately. And I was resistant, although I was a swimmer in high school. Finally, he convinced me to come, and I found a whole new community of people. If you haven't come during the sessions, the most active time is between 9 and 10 and between 10 and 11. Those are the times that people have referred to of having a very large group of people. It's multiracial. It's multinational. There are women who come who would not like to be seen in public on, in their bathing suits. They wouldn't want to be on the beach 
in their bathing suits, but they come to exercise mainly because their doctors have told them that water exercise is the best therapy. Many of us have had knee replacements. I've had two. Some people have had three, not three legs, but <laughs> re a redo on one of them. And the exercises that are done there are very beneficial for reducing fluid around the knee and helping in, in the whole body chemistry. One of the previous speakers mentioned that her blood pressure had come down. I was taken off my blood by uh, high blood pressure medication two weeks ago because my doctor, my cardiologist said, it's down below normal. Let's see what it looks like in three or four weeks. And I really attribute the water exercise that I do there three times a week uh, to helping in reducing my weight as well as my blood pressure. Just so that you understand a little bit better, we have probably five or six people come into the pool deck, onto the pool deck on walkers. Not everyone is as ambulatory as the people who have come tonight. But they come in, fold up their walker, put their towel down, and get into the water and move quite normally and exercise to the point that they're in better health. You might not see that. You might think everybody is, you know, just hustling down. And, but that's not true. People are really deliberate in their movements once they get off their walker and get down the stairs. They're free to move. We went in our subdivision from having two people come to the caustic to now having five. Word got around, people wanted to know, what are you doing, you're losing weight, where should I go, what should I do? It's increasing. I have to say that right after COVID, after everything was closed and all of the, our centers were closed, we had four and five people during a session. And now, there were over 20 today in the 9 to 10. And that is now standard. Instead of having between 5 and 8 people, we have between 20 and 30 people. So there is certainly a need. Whatever is decided, these are considerations. Also, that a pool of that nature needs to be at a certain temperature. And I believe it's 84 to 86. Thank you. Uh, and that's necessary for arthritis exercise and other kinds of exercise. So these are things that we want you to know so that the choice that you make can be that which will serve the people of the community. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. We have our expert pool person, <laughs> Council Member Knoll, who fills us in on all different temperatures required for certain things. She does. She, she, she's our swim maven. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ruth Morrison, and my husband and I have lived in Farmington Hills 40 years. And I go to the Caustic Center because I had hip replacement surgery. And I'm supposed to be riding the bike to keep my hips aligned so I don't have to have a second hip replacement, because heaven forbid. But anyway, it's been a wonderful experience, and I thank you that um, you've kept our city wonderful, beautiful, and very um, just enjoyable to live here. And it's a, it's a great joy to go to the Caustic, and uh, I thank you, and I hope it'll continue to be there. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Pamela Santo. I've lived in Farmington Township um, 74 years ago. Uh, my father retired from the police department here as a lieutenant. Um, I know what's right and what's wrong. And the Hawk, my two daughters uh, graduated out of Harrison High. And the Hawk, whoever playing the Hawk, they could have simplified it, got rid of the caustic center and added that warm pool 
for the seniors over there and develop that whole area for everyone, families, kids, seniors, a whole big deal. I think the planning was a little off. But when it comes to the Caustic Center, it's like medicine to all of us, even the panel. I invite you to come to our, our workouts in the pool with a little music, the warm, warmth, the great instructors. You cannot place that. Two weeks ago, I fell on my deck and I couldn't get up. The pain was excruciating from here all the way down. I went to Henry Ford Medical of West Bloomfield, the hospital. I thought I broke my ribs. No, I damaged my lungs. So I'm going to a specialist tomorrow because I'm still having a little problem with my left lung, coughing and such. I stayed away from water aerobics for 17 days. I thought I'm gonna go back because my breathing's a little stronger, although I have a cough and I'm gonna get in the warm water and move around a little bit because I, I felt so tight and I was hurting. I have two artificial hips, two artificial knees, had lower back surgery. I've had it. The only thing I'm missing is the chip in my arm that I can unlock anything that I need to. Okay, <laughs> but moving forward, I decide today I'm going back on Monday and the restriction that you get moving in the water. I'm not working really hard, but I'm moving everything and I'm doing good. I get out of the pool, take a nice warm shower, come home. I'm having a big glass of water and I'm sitting there. And within an hour of time, I could get up out of my chair without having to grip onto anything. I could, I could move my body. I felt wonderful. And when they said we were meeting up here today, I'll tell you what, that pool is the cat's ass. <laughs> it's wonderful. And you're saying that after sitting through a study session that we had too. <laughs> <you know. laughs> and it's wonderful. So I'm all in plus with that. So um, actually I was talking to a friend that works with Channel 7 News and I told him about the caustic center and everything else. And um, he said, if I needed help with anything or to encourage anything or to move it forward to the improvements of the caustic center, let me know. I said, thank you so much. But um, I appreciate listening to us, but please do something special for all of us. And also I did wanna say this, do something about the damn deer. What are you doing? Oh my God. The deer have eaten. I've gotten readouts. I live on an acre and a half. I'm going to make it really short here. I live on an acre and a half. The deer have eaten $8,763 worth of product off my property. I live on an acre and a half. They're all over the place. I have nothing left. No curb appeal. My place was beautiful. But to make a long story short, um, have you made a decision about what to do with the deer? Um, I'm going to put you in touch with our assistant city manager, Joe Valentine, who's been spearheading the deer thing. And he will, he, he'll go meet with you outside if you want in the hallway, and he will fill you in on, on deer matters. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's not uh, looking particularly wonderful. But. There's, there's, there's a real problem there with the deer. But regardless, um, please come up and swim with us and enjoy the water. It's great. If you got a problem or you're stiff, nah, nah, come see us. But thank you kindly thank you. for your ears. Thank you very much. My name is Ellen Voss, and I've lived in the Farmington Township and city of Farmington Hills and in Farmington area since 1968, and I love it. And you, you've got a community here that you can't fathom if you haven't seen what it's come from and gone through. I don't want to be too redundant, but I have to speak a little bit more about the medical aspect. I've been going to that pool since 2002 when I had my first hip surgery. And this was my therapy and it got me in that water and it's just amazing. In 2003, I got the other hip. 
and I did the same thing. And I did it. I did exercising before. And I want to say this to any one of you who might face this kind of surgery: get therapy before you have the surgery. I I was walking around doing things, and one a surgeon came in and said, "Where, where's your roommate?" To my roommate, and I was out in the hall. Just one day after my hip replacement surgery, and that was back when surgery wasn't this whew, whew, done in a minute. So, so it really, really works to prepare you. And I thank my uh, physician, my primary care guy. He recommended it that I get this therapy first. And now I go to my cardiologist <clears throat> after my um, AFib incident. And the first thing he says when I come in is, you're still swimming, aren't you? <laughs> it works. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you, in all those years I've been going to the Caustic Center for wonderful, um, impact-free exercise and therapy, for, even for the knee, too, in 14 when I got that done. Anyway, he, he is so impressed with with my heart rates and my, you know, everything, my cardiologist. So I wanted to be sure to say that. I can't tell you in that period of time how many people I have talked to who are there because they're getting therapy for their back, their hip, their knee. You know, all through those years, you, you guys know, and the, the physicians recognize the importance. One quick little other thing, so I don't get too rep repetitious, you got to think about the real estate in this town, and you want it to be attractive. You want people to move here. You want people to have facilities that are useful for them. You guys have a center that's a big draw. You talk to people, and you say, I, sometimes I see people, and they say, if you're bored in this city, you're out of your mind, because there's so much for you. And a, and a facility like Caustic Center, and the Meals on Wheels, and this fabulous kitchen, to replace that would be, would be monumental. It's a great place to live and bring up children. So, hooray. You should see her swim, and she died. Oh, well, that's not a big deal. But I, that's one thing I almost forgot. I should have had it written down. I, I'm a, a member of a master's swimming club, <clears throat> Michigan Master's swimming club and those those two lanes at the they're a joke if you really if you want to prepare like i do for uh, many many laps it's too short for starters it's not even a, uh, 25 yards it's too short you can't get your timing and you can't get your physical push because all of a sudden there you got to turn around it, you want to have Good long lanes, and Castic Center has good long lanes. Thank you very much. Good evening. I think you heard a bit about seniors using the Caustic Center. I just wanted to remind you that the scene, in addition to seniors using the Caustic Center, it is used on the weekends by scuba, a scuba company to teach scuba lessons. It's the only air, only pool in the area that. Is, has the depth that they can actually qualify for lessons. We also have the Crocs. The Crocs is a swim team. It is, it, it, it's a, a team of young, young kids who, uh, you know, actually have some competition. Um, they are, they cannot use the hawk because they have to dive in and you can't dive in three feet water. Um, it is also used by homeschooling as part of their uh, phys ed requirements. And there's one other thing. It was mentioned about the big windows at the Hawk where everybody can see you as they're eating their hot dogs and drinking their sodas. Well, on Sunday, there is a women's only. A group of women do not want to have to mix with men. Uh, I'm not sure why, because I've never been there, but uh, I've been, been rushed out before. Uh, but anyhow, you could not have uh, a women's only at the Hawk. So it, there are other things on Saturdays and in the evening 
they do have lessons, and you can't teach lessons, you can't teach flips and other things at the Hawk. It's only at the Caustic Center. So when you're thinking about things, it's as much as you hear the vocal seniors, uh, there's many other uh, ut utilizations to the, to the caustic pool. Thank you. My name is Conrad Hempel, and I moved to Farmington uh, in 1960. My wife and I had a home built there. We've been there until she passed away two and a half years ago. I'm sorry. I'd just like to say amen to all of the things that the lady said about the pool and also add that there's a lot of other things for seniors there at the Hawk. I get my meals because my wife passed away. I get my main meal there every noon, uh, five days a week. And I enjoy some of the other programs. And that, that's what I have to say today. Thank you very much. Anyone else? I want to thank you all for coming. Um, as, as many of you pointed out, there are a lot of things other than just the fact that we have a senior center, but it is one of the few senior centers around that truly caters to seniors. We don't have miles of parking lot that you have to negotiate. It is quiet, it's serene. Uh, there's People play bridge there. They take dance lessons there. Um, there's senior dances out of the building. And there's also, as you pointed out, not only the pool, but the Meals on Wheels. And we wanna make every experience that you have in this community a top-notch one. And the council will, will do everything in their power to make sure that the citizens of Farmington Hills are very well served by the decisions they make. And I want to thank you for taking the time to remind us of this jewel that we have in our city and how important it is to you. So thank you all for showing up tonight. All those senior apartments are going to want a place to go. And I will also point out, I, I turned 69 a week and a half ago, so I'm, I'm there. <laughs> so I may show up one of these days in my very ugly big bathing suit. But anyway, um, thank you all again for coming. And, and, and <laughs> I'll, I'll bring my daughter in the bikini and I'll just show up behind her. Okay. okay. Well, we can't, we have a council meeting that we have to run. And so we need to move on to the next agenda item because there are people here that we pay by the hour. So I, I. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. You guys are wonderful. Just a true joy tonight. Um, next item on the agenda is um, council members' comments and announcements. Anybody? Boy, that was a great Founders Day parade and fair. It was. Um, it was fun. Um, so I want to thank everybody who turned out and to um, thank the city of Farmington for doing a great job and, um, and for hosting and closing the streets and having such a, a great big party. Um, and that was a lot of fun. Anybody else have anything? I just wanted to say, I want to echo the mayor's comments. I went to the, we all went to the uh, Founders Day parade and I went down there on Sunday as well and all on Friday, but that, that, that three day event is just a, a um, it is. great experience for the, um, for the, for the area, for Farmington, Farmington Hills, got vendors there, you got the parade, we have citizens in our community, in our area here uh, enjoying themselves. So it's just a wonderful opportunity for everybody to come together and to, to uh, live and believe uh, Farmington area. So it's a good opportunity. Thank you. Um, city manager, update. I, I too, I have a very short report. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody on council for attending the parade. It was a wonderful parade and I certainly want to give a tip of the cap to our staff that was there to help organize and make sure we're all pointed in the right direction and they're on time. And I know it's like herding cats, but 
Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You want to also recognize Brian Farmer because Brian, Brian's there every year. Brian, appreciate you, man. You're always there every year taking care of what you need to take care of. So we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> Anything else? No. Okay. That brings us to new business. Item number two, consideration of appeal of Freedom of Information Act FOIA request dated April 24th, 2023. And I will turn it over to the city attorney. Uh, thank you, Mayor Barnett. Uh, as council is aware, but just so the public is aware, this deals, uh, this matter uh, is a legal proceeding pertaining to the Freedom of Information Act. Uh, the city receives hundreds of Freedom of Information Act requests, uh, regularly receiving them every day, uh, once in a while, uh, when uh, a Freedom of Information Act uh, a request is uh, denied because there are exemptions of material that can be disclosed under the act that the city is allowed to uh, not disclose. The individual re making the request has the opportunity to appeal that decision uh, made by the administration. They can appeal that to city council. So every once in a while you have an appeal that comes before you uh, and the person who made the request can come before you for a hearing uh, and explain why they think that that uh, that their Freedom of Information Act request should not have been denied or should not have been uh, uh, handled the way it was handled. Uh, and that is what you have here before you this evening is an appeal of a Freedom of Information Act that was um, a request dated April 24, 2023. It was responded to, some materials were provided uh, but uh, there was some materials that did not exist and there were also partly redacted materials. Uh, the gentleman uh, who made the request has asked to appeal it. Uh, he, uh, the procedure that we usually follow with these is for the requester uh, to have the opportunity to come up and speak uh, at the podium uh, and present the basis for why they think that their appeal uh, uh, should be, uh, why the decision of the administration should be reversed. Uh, and, or otherwise addressed. And uh, Mr. Uh, Young from our office, uh, one of the city attorneys from our office here is here. Uh, he, as you know, he works with the city administration on FOIA matters and he is here. He would then get up and uh, provide information from the city's perspective relative to this appeal. And then it would come back to you for your decision. So if we could, uh, Madam Mayor, if you would uh, proceed with the hearing and invite the gentleman up if okay, he is, is present. Is it Mr. Bloomer, Blomer? Is he here this evening? Okay, so how do we proceed in the absence of the appellant? Yes, well, we have had this occur before uh, where an individual does not appear. We usually have the matter proceed uh, uh, with the hearing in his absence. He has submitted his appeal and uh, it can be presented by Mr. Young. I think he's checking out there to see if, because I believe he was here and it might no longer be here. So if we could give Mr. Young a moment. Um, okay. He is headed back in at this time and uh, you can invite him to come up and give the city administration's part of this and just rest on what Mr. Blomer has provided at this point. Mr. Young, have you found him? Okay, would you like to present then um, the, uh, the city's case? Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for having this hearing today. We're here to talk about Mr. Blomer's uh, uh, FOIA appeal. I hopefully I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Uh, the, uh, we know the background, there was an incident, there was an allegation made, there was an investigation conducted, there was an investigation that was closed. Um, that's the, the short of it. The, the, the details are uh, there was uh, Mr. Bloomer, either his, his credit card or his wife's credit card was taken uh, and then used at the Apple store, uh, which I believe is in, in Novi. And um, uh, Detective McDonald, who's here today, investigated that matter. Um, Apple is frustrating when it comes to their propriety inf proprietary information. We requested a video, the police department requested a video pursuant to the investigation. They sent a video, but it had a subscription link that you had to sign into, that you had to access. Uh, rather than fight with Apple, the detective uh, asked them, can I get some information, can I get still shots of the video? Can I get still shots, can I see what happened at the register where the alleged action occurred? 
the Apple uh, worked with her and provided the, that information. And upon receipt of that, the individuals were wearing masks. They were wearing surgical masks. This was still a time where you know, people were still wearing masks. That, that Hayes last week brought back a lot of masks, but you know, people were wearing masks and they were wearing surgical You could not identify. The officer reviewed that and said, I cannot identify it based on these really clear cut still shots. Uh, I, can't, I can't identify there, nor would I be able to identify if I looked at the video. So the officer made a, a discretionary decision uh, to close the matter. Now that link from Apple, I believe uh, when the investigation the incident occurred, that link was going to uh, expire within le about a month of the time in, um, that was provided to the officer. And uh, it was going to expire. So a FOIA request, the reason why that's important is a FOIA request was made by Mr. Blomer, uh, Mr. Blomer, I believe in April, late April for that information. So based upon the timing of that request, that link wouldn't have been around. That wouldn't link wouldn't have been around. They answered the FOIA and they said the document does not exist as to that. They redacted the police report. They provided the police report and redacted photos, uh, photos of the still shots pursuant to the exemptions under the statute. But they said that the, uh, the document did not exist. Mr. Blumer didn't like that answer. I get brought in at the appeal. I'm talking to it. I reach out to him. I have a discussion. I want to find out where this, if this, the possibility to get this, this video even despite the links. That wasn't able to happen. But more importantly, we were able to understand the, the communication between the Apple Store and uh, the detective why that uh, video wasn't available. And we provided that to Mr. Moore, as well as, uh, the, again, providing him the still shots. Uh, nonetheless, we're still here today. We're here for an appeal. But So the bottom line as to the opinion for the purpose of the appeal is that um, the document does not exist. I can't provide, can't have the police department provide what it does not have, nor did it ever have. And all exemptions uh, that were relied upon direct the, uh, other in, uh, excuse me, uh, information, including the contact information of the Apple individual, the uh, identities, if uh, whatever we had of the suspects, all of that was redacted pursuant to the statute and set forth in anything you review. So our position is to affirm the denial based upon those reasons and um, move on. Do you okay, have any so questions? So in, in, in a bottom line case, the, Mr. Blomer is asking for documents that don't exist. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, does any council member have any questions? Mm -mm. Is there a motion? Is there a question? Question? No. I, oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I move to affirm the police department's partial denial of Mr. Blomer's April 24th, 2023 FOIA request for the following reasons. One, FOIA Section 5B does not require the police department to provide any documents that do not exist. Two, FOIA Section 3.5 does not require the police department to create a new public record or material for a FOIA request. Number three, FOIA Section 1A and B allows the police department to redact information that would infringe upon an individual's privacy right or right to a fair trial. And number four, the police department never possessed, accessed, or had access to the video referenced in the report at any time in furtherance of the investigation at issue in the appeal. Okay, it's been uh, moved by Dr. Bruce, seconded by Council Member Knoll. Any discussion? Seeing none, is this a straight vote or a roll call? Straight vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Passes seven to zero, unanimous vote. Thank you. Next item is consideration of approval of Farmington Hills Senior Living LLC license agreement with the City of Farmington Hills Department of Special Services CMR 27-23-87. CMR <laughs> You're up. Oh, that's Mr. Farmer. <laughs> All right, so you heard um, earlier about Rose, the development there. Um, there's 225 units being built for independent living, assisted living, long-term memory care. So in a previous agreement with Rose, they've given the city use of uh, three rooms that we never had use of before. So as you heard earlier, we need more space for programming. So we're able now to get the chapel, Carlo, in a new room, and it's called Carrie. Um, so, so we're lucky to get that space. So Rose has actually been a great partner, great to work with. We talked about parking. Um, 
they understand they can't use that parking area that we have. We are going to allow them two spaces as we propose this next thing, which is um, use of the carry room uh, just temporarily so they can start to sell units, which they expect to be open by May or June of 2024. So we want them to be able to use that space to be able to do that. And again, educate their future customers on what the Caustic Center is and some of the services that we offer. Um, they've agreed that they would pay $2,000 a month, uh, so $24,000 for a year lease of that space. Our staff isn't ready to program all three spaces yet, but we'll gradually get into that. So we feel like uh, giving up that room carry for the next uh, year would allow us to get ready for that space to be available for us. Um, so that's what this item is asking for. Any questions? Anybody have any questions? I, I, I do. Yes. I noticed that the rent for the, um, uh, it's going to be about $2,000 a month for over 2,000 square foot footage. How do we arrive at that figure for the rental of that particular room or space? So it's comparable to a lot of the other spaces that we use. Mm -hmm. um, and as we, so for example, at the Hawk, there's some um, groups using spaces on a permanent base basis. And so Play Labs, for example, the sports gaming facility mm -hmm. starts off at a lower rate for square footage, and then we increase that rate because they're going to stay there longer. So as we've done these uh, agreements before, we start at a rate of somewhere between $10, actually $9 sometimes, all the way up to $20. So this is about $12 a square foot square foot so when you look at the leasing like market 2,000 square footage 2,080 something and we were renting it for 2,000 so that's, yeah so $12 a square foot per the year is $24,000 so it'd be $2,000 a month how we arrived at that so it's 12,000 $12 per square foot for the year correct is that comparable to that's how say, other um places can anybody speak on the rental so when we did the research there was when you look at office space use for example we looked at all those and we also talked to other parks and rec departments mm -hmm. that use space so a lot of hospitals use spaces for example uh, dmc beaumont a lot of those uh, organizations use space within rec facilities mm -hmm. and that square footage we're right in that area of uh, comparable uh, space use okay. So it's, the room is empty right now. It's not being used for anything. Correct. It's, it doesn't even have a certific certificate of occupancy yet. So once it does get that, yeah. we would like them to use that space. And then that opens the chapel and the mm -hmm. Carlo space for mm -hmm. us to start to use for programming. And then eventually the carrier, room, which would be like May or June of next year, once they're, okay. they're opened up as a larger facility. And then they'll have their own permanent leasing office space on the grounds uh, of Rose. So the other... Uh, part of this is that we do get, um, they do have to pay taxes for the mm -hmm. chapel, Carlo and Carrie, mm -hmm. and they're going to remain, uh, continue to pay those taxes for the carry room as mm -hmm. part of the agreement. We won't be paying those taxes. So they're paying rent plus taxes. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions? Seeing none, is there a motion? Mm -hmm. Mr. Bridges? Yes. Uh, uh, Mayor, I move the council approve the uh, Farmington Hills Senior Living LLC license agreement with the City of Farmington Hills Department of Special Services, CMR 72387. Okay. Is there a second? Support. Okay. It's moved, been moved by Mr. Bridges, seconded by Ms. Bolaware. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Okay. It passes unanimously, 7 to 0. Next is consideration. Thank you. Of appointing of appointment of voting delegate and alternate voting delegate for the Michigan. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. Did I miss four? Yes. Oh, I just checked it off. Maybe, maybe I didn't want to hire. <laughs> Send a message there. We <laughs> no message. Inadvertent. Sorry. <laughs> Item number four. Okay. Consideration of appointment of Carly Lindell as the city clerk effective January twenty second, twenty twenty four. We need to have a clerk, folks. We really do. Because <laughs> Pam's leaving. Yes. Um, and we need to have a very qualified one. Is there any discussion? Is there a motion, Dr. Massey? 
Yes, Madam Mayor. I would move that City of Farmington Hill City Council hereby appoints Carly Lindell, Deputy City Clerk, to the position of City Clerk to be effective January 22, 2024, with the terms of employment and compensation to be finalized at a later date. Support. It's been moved and it's been seconded. Do you want us to approve this first? Okay. <laughs> Boy, she loves working here. Um, seeing no discussion, um, is there, there's a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Um, our, our future clerk is here to address the body. Yes, I will be very quick. So good evening, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, I look forward to serving the residents of Farmington Hills at this, as the city clerk and working with all of you. I want to give thanks to the city manager, uh, city administration, staff, clerk's office staff, especially our wonderful city clerk, um, along with my friends, my best friend, and my family for their guidance and support. So I'm excited to begin this next chapter of my career with the city. So thank you very much. We are very excited to have you. Congratulations. Unlike several cities that where you vote on a clerk and you're not sure whether you're getting somebody qualified or not, we are getting somebody very qualified. And that has been the history of the city of Farmington Hills when it comes to the clerk's office. It's very important. And the True. clerks that we've had and will continue to have are, are not only excited about their job, they do it exceedingly well. So thank you. Next item, repeat, number five. Consideration of appointment of voting delegate and alternate voting delegate for the Michigan Municipal League annual meeting, October 18th, 2023. I'd like to make a nomination. Oh, or do we discuss it first? I'm not certain. I think we nominate. I will be going. Mm -hmm. You will be going? I will be going. Great Azure. Would you like to? Well, I know Mary had asked that, you know, she be okay. given that. Okay. Um, I will be at the meeting, but you guys choose. I don't have to have any title there. Okay. Right. I'm President Emeritus. Okay. Well, I'm going to nominate uh, Mary Newland as our voting delegate for the Michigan Municipal League annual meeting okay. on October 18th. Okay. Do we need an alternate? We do. We, yeah. All right. Do you want to be the alternate? I could be the alternate. All right. Okay. okay. Make the motion of both of those. Okay. Well, Jackie's got, we got a motion on the table. Yes. Yes, I'd like to make another motion that... Uh, part um, of the motion, the other that, half of it. The other half of the, mo okay. of the motion is that uh, Mayor Vicki Barnett be our alternate voting delegate for the Michigan Municipal League annual meeting on October 18th. I would be honored. Support. Okay, it's been moved by Council Member Bolaware, seconded by Council Member Knoll. Mm -hmm. um, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Well, we're going. It'll be a, a great time. Uh, we always learn a lot at the Michigan Municipal League Conference, and um, very excited um, to be a part of it. Um, and that brings us to um, the close part of the agenda. Um, so, Item number 15 is recommended approval of entering into a closed section, session to discuss TPOAM, Technical Professional Office Workers Association of Michigan's settlement negotiations. And um, please note that we will return to open session immediately following the closed session to take action if needed and then to close the meeting. Is there a motion? McNair, I'm moving move to, move to closed session. Okay, it's been moved by. You got to say yeah. the reason. Okay, let me say. Okay, Mayor, uh, I make a motion, Mayor, that we move to closed session to discuss a TPOAM uh, settlement negotiations. Uh, basically, that's it. Support. Okay. It's been moved by Mr. Bridges, seconded by Ms. Knoll. All in favor say aye. The roll call okay. vote. Yeah. And, and Mayor, you Mayor, give me just... my little RR. <laughs> Sorry. Little RC. Your RC. Yes. May I, uh, may I just clarify for the public and for the record that this is a collective bargaining matter under the under the Open Meetings Act, just to, so everybody is clear in the public what this is about. Thank you. Yes. Um, 
So this will be a, a discussion about the contract negotiations, where they're going, and to probably ask us. Well, and then we'll come back for an open session. We do not take any action at all in a in a study session or in a closed session. We have to come to open session in order to have um, deliberations and a final decision. That's required by law. So um, roll call vote. Roll call vote. Council members Bolaware? Yes. Massey? Yes. Knoll? Yes. Bridges? Yes. Bruce? Yes. Newland? Yes. And Mayor Barnett? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so <clears throat> my two friends know the drill. <laughs> now officially entering closed session and we will be back. Um, probably with um, an action to come. So if you're watching this at home, stay tuned if you want to see it to the very end. Welcome back to the regularly scheduled meeting of July 24th for the City of Farmington Hills. Um, since there is nothing left on the agenda um, to discuss tonight, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. Support. Been moved by Mr. Bridges, supported by Dr. Bruce. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 It passes unanimously. We will see you all again in August at our August 14th meeting. Please watch the weather reports to make sure you are out in only healthy weather and bring a mask if we've got very hazy and dangerous skies. Have a fun summer, uh, at least the rest of July which is only one week left. I can't believe how time flies. Good night, Farmington Hills.